Let's get across more on those moves. Alan Nachman, Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial, joins us live from the CME in Chicago. Alan, pleasure as always. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's talk a little bit more about the Russell 2000, the small cap index, because it is true, isn't it, that I guess some of those small caps really stand to benefit the most um, when you have these tensions, these trade tensions sort of escalating, um, continuing to, to do well, I guess, in this environment. Is that the place to be, those small caps? Uh, I'm not so sure. I, thought, I think you saw a rotation of funds uh, into some more risky, let's say, uh, technology stocks, moving them into the small cap space because they are a little bit safer play when it comes to this dollar strength. Now, is this dollar strength sustainable? I'm not so sure. Uh, we did make new highs in the dollar, new lows in the euro dollar, uh, euro currency actually, uh, in 2018 today, but then reversed. We ended up closing positive in the euro currency and unchanged in that dollar. So maybe that's the beginning of a, a change of this little upward trend that we've seen in the dollar index, but that's really what's given the, uh, the small caps uh, some support because they're an alternative to multinational corporations that are more sensitive to, uh, to that dollar strength that can hurt their sales. What about some of those other companies that generate a decent chunk of their revenues from China and obviously stand to benefit from China, you know, cracking down on that tough trade talk? I'm thinking the likes of Boeing or Caterpillar or some of those chip makers. They seem to be the ones in focus today. Have you been seeing much activity uh, through the session? Well, I often say optimism wins, and that's really been the case here in the last couple of weeks. We made a solid bottom base in stocks, and for me, what was most significant was the push above 2700 in the S&P, which is the halfway point of this longer sideways action since August between 2600 and 2800. So we pushed above that midpoint, and that's very much a positive. Now, we followed through, and we've held above that for the last couple of weeks. Today, we saw the Dow hit 25,000 for the first time since March. You saw the uh, NASDAQ, the NDX Tech Top 100 last week get within three percent of its all-time high so this is just a, a little bit of a reaction here today uh, to the proposed policy problems that we were so worried about not coming to fruition and the markets can continue to move forward so uh, this is this is the beginning of some strong significant moves I think here in the future so yeah the trend looks higher at this point I mean we've obviously come out of earnings season now a fairly light week on the macro calendar you've got geopolitical right. concerns and trade tensions kind of easing with all of that in mind does the trend look higher from here I think we've got some strength I mean we use the Russell as a as you know a, a good indicator of internal strength that sector made all-time forever highs and you talk about the strength four days in a row now we've got some work to do in the S&P the S&P is up a couple percent uh, in 2018 uh, but like I said it's it's reacted relatively well if we can get above the 2750 level then we'll make a quick attack on 2800 and then we'll be talking all-time highs once again so you've got to respect this overall trend now we haven't talked about the VIX yet but the VIX had given us a clue before this upward move in the stock market. We saw the VIX decline and decline, and it was down there in the 12 handle last week. Uh, so that was a sign that we had uh, volatility normalize and get back into that range that we used to talk about all of last year where we traded between you know 10 and 15 for forever so now we're we're down at those low low levels so we've seen the VIX decline and that's usually a positive sign that you'll see the stock market uh, move higher. What about the exposure, I suppose, to some of those materials and resources stocks? We know, well, energy companies are probably um, a story in themselves because obviously they've been rising with the, the back of, you know, the, the higher oil price there. But obviously commodities getting a boost here with these easing tensions on, on trade. Do you think commodities perhaps is the place to be? Again, gold is right. kind of moving on, on the strength of the dollar. So it's, again, sort of moving on separate issues being the dollar there. But what about other commodities and those material stocks as a, as a play on the these easing tensions? Well, from a reward to risk standpoint, I, I like where you're going with this. Now, we want to separate gold and commodities. Commodities, I think, will benefit from a reflation that we see in just all of assets as the markets get more stable and in kind of the macro play. Now, we've been talking about crude for months and years now, and that's that's already uh, had, a, had a significant run. So I think there's better opportunity, like you talked about, in some of these metals markets. Silver didn't sell off as much as gold did, and gold was very interesting in the fact today it made new 2018 lows and had a higher close. So that's usually the sign that a bottom gets put in and also 
to get uh, a little technical, we saw bullish divergence, meaning we made new relative lows, but not new relative highs in the, uh, in the volatility. So that's usually a sign that the sellers have exhausted. So I like gold from a long-term reward to risk play. I'm looking at some long-term options there uh, in, in GLD or GDX, the gold miners, because again, I think there's less downside risk in that sector because it's suffered uh, so far in 2018, but it made a nice technical bottoming formation today that let's see if it can build it on. Absolutely. Just before we leave you, um, I was reading some headlines around uh, deal activity, uh, sort of boosting sentiment that there today. One of the big ones was General Electric um, in this $11 billion deal to merge its transportation right. business with Wabtec. Was that one that you were watching at all today? And I was just wondering if you might be able to update us a little bit more on that deal. Yeah, we've been talking about GE. I think we've talked about this in particular um, months ago and weeks ago um, from a stock that had been distressed and damaged. Uh, it had dropped 50% in the last year of trade. It was one of the Dow dogs, the Dow dog, obviously. From a trading standpoint, the way that I like to approach the market, I was looking at some 2020 call options, some $10 calls that were in the money as a stock substitution strategy for if and when that stock eventually bounced, a low risk way to play that. So now we're seeing a push above 15 and a half, which was the highest level since February. So it looks maybe like we've got a bottom in place in GE, but that's how I like to attack the markets. You find something that's beaten down and looks bad and just buy enough time uh, to position yourself for when that uh, does make a turnaround because at some point those short sellers are going to cover and that market's going to bounce if and the big if is if we remain in an overall bull market and I don't see that changing anytime soon. All right fantastic on that note Alan we'll leave it there appreciate you joining us though thank you so much.